Hello everybody, today we'll talk about different types of windowing in digital signal processing. So in signal processing, windowing is a preliminary signal shaping technique usually applied to improve the appearance and usefulness of a Fourier transform. Now when you have a signal in the time domain, and in, in order to understand what the signal is made up of, you need to perform a Fourier transform. Now one of the prerequisites of performing a Fourier transform is that the signal must appear infinitely long and continuous in the time domain. In order to do this, we take a chunk of the signal, repeat it over and over again, so that it appears infinitely long. But then, we are introducing discontinuity. And this is the reason why we need windowing, so as to remove those discontinuities, so that the final signal appears continuous and infinitely long in the time domain, so that we can perform the Fourier transform and proceed with the analysis. So that's the main purpose of applying a window. Uh, now, if you want to learn more about windowing, I've explained it in detail in a separate video, and the link is in the description. So to summarize, when we perform a windowing operation, we're taking the signal and multiplying it by the window so as to get the windowed signal and then perform the FFT and move with the process. There are different types of window, but there is no one size fits for all windows, so it depends on the application. So when you perform a window, you know, it leads to the main lobe and side lobes. Now, ideally, we want the main lobe to be as thin as possible and to have no side lobes at all. So if you look at the ideal window, it has a narrow main lobe and high attenuation of the side lobes. Now, when you have a main lobe, the main lobe should not compromise the amplitude of the signal, so capture the exact signal, uh, the exact amplitude of the signal, and when you don't have side lobes, you're minimizing or eliminating spectral leakage. So if there is no spectral leakage, which means the actual spectra that you see is you know, reflecting what the signal is actually made up of. If you're gonna have spectral leakage, it'll give misleading information about the signal. So there are different types of window. First, let's start with the uniform window. The uniform window, also known as the rectangular window, is a time window with unit amplitude for all time samples and is as good as not applying a window at all. So it has a rectangular shape, it doesn't attenuate any part of the time data. Since it doesn't attenuate, it doesn't force a signal to appear periodic in the time domain. So it is best used for signals that are already periodic in the time domain. For example, transients and bursts. So if you apply this windowing for a signal that is not periodic in the time domain, you're not gonna get some good results. So we'll use a reference tone of one kilohertz in the time domain so as to display different windows in the frequency domain. So this is a uniform window shape or the rectangular window, and this is how it looks like. If it has been applied on a non-periodic signal, then you can see that there is this uh, main lobe which captures the one kilohertz, but there is really bad uh, you know, spectral leakage because there are too many side lobes here. Next is a hand window, hand window named after Julius von Hahn, some software referred to as Hanning window. The hand window attenuates the input signal at both ends, so it forces the signal to appear periodic in the time domain. Also, it ensures that the signal is continuous in the time domain because the endpoints are attenuated. The hand window offers good frequency resolution, reduced spectral leakage, but at the expense of some amplitude accuracy. So there is minor amplitude errors due to the shape of the window. It's commonly used for broadband signals, just random noise. So this is a hand window. If you compare this with the rectangular window, it's much better because you know it has reduced the spectral leakage drastically, and it's also capturing the one kilohertz, but there is some minor amplitude error at the top. The next is a Hamming window. Hamming window is proposed by Richard Hamming. The endpoints of this window does not touch zero, so there is slight discontinuity in the signal. Now, in comparison to hand window, the endpoints touch zero and there is no discontinuity at all. Now, however, Hamming window does have an advantage and disadvantage. The advantage is that the first side low of the hand window is cancelled, but the spectral leakage is higher than the hand window. So this is how a Hamming window looks like. You do see that when compare, in comparing this to the hand window, the spectral leakage is higher. The next is a black man window. The black man window has a wider main lobe compared to hand and hamming, but it has better side lobe attenuation compared to hand and hamming. The next is a black man Harris window. It is a generalization of the hamming family. 
It is produced by adding more shifted sine C functions to minimize the side lobe levels. As you can see here that it is very close to an ideal window. It, it has a wide main lobe, but side lobes have been reduced drastically. So to conclude, all windows trade off two competing goals, which is having a narrow main lobe and high attenuation of the side lobes. And every window has advantages and disadvantages. So choose a window as per the application so as to best represent the acquired signal. All right, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.